Hi, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for September 2024. Um, so this is going to be for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, those intuitively guided to the reading. You may not know if you even have Taurus in your chart. Uh, you probably do, but um, probably your spirit guides that kind of nudged you to the reading. Uh, you could certainly be in love with the Taurus, whether platonically or romantically. And if that's the case, just know your guides know you're here. So you'll receive messages yourself. Um, as many of you do know, I read through my spirit guides. I really use the cards as the tools that ignite the message. Um, and I this month I am doing um, opposite signs. So what I normally do is I started the birthday month. So I started at Virgo. But then I decided instead of going in order like Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, I decided to do each sign's opposite month. And, you know, first of all, I felt intuitively guided to do that. And then I thought about it and I thought, well, that makes sense because our opposite sign, we can truly learn from, you know, like what we may lack, we can learn from them and vice versa. So I'm just finding that the readings are quite amazing. And I may continue to do this um, for October's readings also. I just love the way they're turning out. And by the way, Scorpio's reading was wild. So I will let you know. Um, I am looking for synchronicities. Um, so I'll let you know like if they show up. Some of you probably have already watched a Scorpio reading. Um, so that's what we're doing this month. We're also bringing back the major arcanas. And um, we're using these for like a bullet point. You know, it's interesting how I always say we're, we, we're using these. And to me, it's like, okay, well, I know my spirit guides are here because it's not I'm using them. We're using them. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're going to use this for like four bullet points. Um I'm shooting for like three cards, but whatever comes out is what comes out. We're not going to refuse them. Um, and then we'll get into your main spread. So we will start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. Um, and by the way, I'm using the same decks that I used in Scorpio. So every opposite signs reading, I'm using the same decks. Um, we are going to use the Guild of Tarot to clarify or go deeper like i like to say for your main spread we are going to use the universal tarot and um let's just go ahead and get started i'm going to go ahead and bring my lid down a little bit there we go put these aside for a second and let's start with mother mary i've been finding that in a lot of the readings um I'm doing Mother Mary at the beginning of the reading, but then something is calling me to also take a card at the end of the reading. Really a message. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. So Taurus, I'm going to officially open up this reading. Um, I do want to remind you that, you know, what I want you to think about is, you know, that you're a spiritual being who came down in this earth time as a human and that's to have human experiences um your spiritual being is the intellect to your soul so um why am i saying that hmm i completely forgot why i even brought that up um oh i know what i was going to say so before you came into this lifetime you were assigned like angels archangels a spiritual team and i feel like as loved ones leave us crossover they join probably not all of them but i feel like a lot of them then join your spiritual team to help guide you so that's why i always tell you like feel free to ask for confirmation from your guides you know whether it be like a name a number it's interesting i have this song on my mind um and I think I love you. Dun, 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 dun. It's the Partridge family. Um, 
you'd have to be pretty old, probably my age, to even know what song that is. But it just keeps playing over and over in my head. I think I love you. So, um, anyways, that's why I say ask your guides to have me say something. Numbers. Song. Some people don't like it when I sing. But I feel like when a song comes to my mind during a reading, um, it's validation for someone. So, all right, Mother Mary. Mother Mary, for a beautiful Taurus. Is... You know, for September, though, I really feel like readings are timeless. I feel like you're going to find a reading, a reading's going to find you just when you need it. All right, we've got a couple. We have trust. Trust. I know that God, in his infinite wisdom and love, is answering my prayers right now. Nice. You know, that tells me you need to be in the present moment energy because of a prayer is being answered. And, you know, also I feel like, you know, we may pray a certain prayer, want something to come in a certain way. But I feel like what we really want to do is be open, like definitely, you know, say that prayer, but then be open to the way it's going to be answered. And I say that because usually it's answered um, in a, uh, a lot of times a much better way than I even expected. So trust. I know that God in his infinite wisdom and love is answering my prayers right now. Om. Home is where the heart is. I trust and follow my divine guidance about my home. All right, so trust and home. And we're going to put those right there. And we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and give them a couple shuffles. Bring in the major arcanas. Again, we're using these as bullet points. Going to make myself some room. All right, let's give them a cut. A little hard to cut because there's not that many. And sometimes this can tell its own little message. But it definitely, I feel like it always relates, just like Mother Mary, I feel like it always relates back to the reading. So, make sure my cards in the upright, they are. Well, hello, destiny. This is the wheel. You know, it's interesting. Um, I haven't seen these. I haven't used these cards in quite a while. And the first thing I notice is that this woman is standing at the wheel and she is blindfolded. It's like blind faith. Well, that reminds me of a Bob Seger song. Like, I'm going to spin this wheel. And wherever it lands is where I'm going to go. You know, maybe it's speaking about blind faith in destiny. This certainly does represent movement and destiny at the same time. So I feel like it's saying that something is going to open up that was that is just part of your destiny. And that may be why I spoke about like, you know, that we are spiritual beings having human experiences. So I just trust in this will. I just trust in destiny. Okay. Well, hello, lovers. Um, I do have to say Scorpio got the same card uh, probably like four times, three times. The lovers. Uh, I'm not really reading these as like people. I'm reading more of the energy, though I will say it is a card of Gemini. The meaning of the card is ahead of a hard decision. Um, it's interesting that the lovers is following the wheel, destiny. Um, the one thing I do recognize about this is how close their hands are, but they're not quite touching yet. 
it is the angel's influence over these lovers. And of course it would be because, again, this is something that's destined. You know, maybe that wheel hasn't turned for a while. But it feels like now, like now, it's it's ready to turn. And again, like Mother Mary, I felt that energy of needing to be in the present moment. Why? Because that's where your signs are sent. That's where your signs are sent. Lovers next to the wheel. All right. Let's see if we can get one more out. Okay, two more. We have the hangman. So this probably meant there was a pause in the action. You know, the hangman to me is someone who is seeking wisdom. Um, I'm seeking spiritual wisdom for this earthly plane. Like, what steps do I take next? It's almost like someone's holding themselves back. Um, but purposely. Like, you know. Like he's loosely tied to that limb. He is swaying to the right. And we have one more card. So let's see what he's swaying to. The Empress. The Empress. So, the Empress. I love the Empress. I feel like many of you carry the energy of the Empress. First of all, look how bountiful she is. Like... You know, it's like her harvest. Maybe some of you have been waiting for this harvest. And maybe the wheel now moving, this harvest is coming. Um, the Empress is someone who, you know, I feel like has lived a lot of life. And it doesn't matter your age. I'm not talking about like a lot of years. I mean, a lot of experiences. And the one thing the Empress has learned is how to keep her heart open, right? She's someone who's very loving, nurturing, but she's also someone who's very powerful. This is definitely someone who trusts her intuition. And this is someone who is receiving signs, epiphanies. I mean, we all are, but she does live in the present moment. So, you know, I feel like really divine signs coming her way. It's also the mother figure. Some of you, you could certainly have a mother, a mother figure that helps guide you um, on this earthly plane. This may be also single for you. Keep your heart open. You know, to me, it's like if I close down my heart because of past experiences, am I then not telling the universe that all right, I don't want any more love, let's just say, in my life. This is about trusting your intuition. You know, the Empress has really learned how to read people. So if anyone that came towards her was of a lower vibration, because she is of a higher vibration, doesn't mean she's perfect. None of us are perfect. But she trusts her intuition to lead her into you know what is right what is good and if it's not good she knows it right away and i feel like this is a sign for you to really keep your intuition open by the way you know the hangman is swaying her direction the wheel is bringing out the lovers and the hangman is bringing out the empress the mother figure Um, she's also very creative. A lot of times you'll see the Empress, um, where she looks like she's about nine months pregnant. And that means to me that she's about to give birth to something. And, you know, this could talk about something that maybe like I wanted to bring. And again, she definitely looks like she's got her harvest. Maybe that's what I've been waiting for. Like, where is my harvest? But remember, to receive that harvest, you have to plant those seeds. If I plant no seeds, I have no harvest. Another way of saying that is that if I expect bad things to happen, 
then I'll be damned bad things happen. But if I can turn that around and expect good things to happen, then I feel like, well, that's the law of attraction. So the wheel brings out the lovers, the lovers next to the hangman, and then the hangman swaying towards the empress. It's almost like saying, are you ready for love? Are you ready to, let's say, bring um, like projects to life, things that um, I feel like you'd be naturally good at? And again, I feel like the Empress mirroring the wheel, it means, you know, whatever you're bringing into life here, it just feels like it's the right time, but also it feels like it was just meant to be. And maybe this is the time. Maybe I wanted it earlier, but maybe it just wasn't the right time. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring in the Universal Tarot. I'm going to give him a couple shuffles. Let's do one more. One more. I think I love you. I can't remember the rest of the words. You know, it's interesting. Um, in Scorpio's reading, I accidentally talked about Phil Donahue. Um, I meant someone else, but I said Phil Donahue. And it's interesting because I wake up this morning and hear that Phil Donahue has passed away. Um... So, I don't know, but I feel like to me, like, I feel like my guides are always giving me confirmation, you know, that what I'm doing, um, that I'm on the right track, let's just say, that that reading was exactly what it was meant to be. All right. We have the strength card, card of Leo, strength card number eight, number of infinity, literally the infinity sign is right above this, uh, this person's head. So, you know, the strength card to me is really, um, one who is really looking within. It can talk about certain things that I've been tempted to. Um, it talks about you know, the, the polar opposites of the light and the dark, the male and the female, right? That we're a mixture of all that. And it's really about this person learning how to tame, you know, well, anything. Sometimes it can be addiction. Sometimes it can be where I've just been living in lower vibrational energy. You know, it is learning. And it's learning from that shadow self, not being afraid of it. Again, this person is like in sync with the lion. A lot of times you'll see this image as a female or a male who um, is also half lion. And to me, that's a sense of power, courage. But it may have had to come through some deep reflection. Okay. Hmm. Nine of swords. Interesting because Scorpio got that also. Ah, and four of cups also. Different in different placements, but same energy. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. First of all, the Nine of Swords is coming under the lovers. Nine of Swords talks about, you know, something that I'm just worried about. Something that, um, you know, maybe I think just can't happen. It, the meaning of the card is unnecessary worry. And really, Divine would say, you know, it, 
if this is something that I'm worrying about that I really have no control over, hand it over to me. You know, just hand it over to me. And then it moves into the Four of Cups. Four of Cups talks about discontentment, boredom in one's life. But really, this person is being handed a cup. There's a cup coming in. And I feel like it's coming from the hand of God. You know, this person's sitting by a tree. To me, that's wisdom. Kind of like what the hangman is seeking, wisdom. I have a feeling this means some of you, you are looking for some change in your life. And it looks like it's heading your way. But I do want to recognize that this person's head is down. Almost like in a state of sadness. Like, why? It's probably why the strength card was first. I just need to understand, like, you know, the parts of myself that, you know, in a way I feel like I'm not trusting in divine timing in this energy. Maybe I'm trying to control something that really is outside of my control. It doesn't mean that there can't be change because there, this cup is coming in. The hangman might be like, when? Well, I feel like with the empress mirroring the wheel, probably soon. But will you be ready for it? Eight, allowing oneself to have a new beginning. Nine of swords, unnecessary worry. It's almost like saying the right love will come at the right time. You know, it's it's hard. You can't really plan love. It comes when it when when it's time, right? Um, and there's no way I feel like this would be like of a lower vibrational type love, not with the Empress here. Because again, she you know, and I feel like the Nine of Swords also doesn't fit. Maybe that's what trust is also about. Maybe some of you have been praying for some answers, solutions, you know, um, but real solutions, real answers. And I feel like that's what you're going to receive here. So, Four of Cups says, use your spiritual discernment. That's a gift that was given to you. And trust in that. Sometimes things end, and we may not understand at that moment why. But I feel like with this energy, down the road, we will understand. We have the Four of Pentacles. Two fours, 44. That may ring a bell with someone. Interesting, too, because 44, four and a four equal the eight. So what doesn't fit the nine, the nine of swords? Four of pentacles really talks about being grounded. Um, I feel like it, it can certainly talk about a home. But it can also talk about being resistant to change, to other people's ideas, even your own. You know, if you just look how tightly this person is hanging on to that pentacle, and I feel like if it's relating to love, maybe I'd hope someone would love me in a certain way, but maybe it just didn't work out that way. But listen, in the same breath, the wheel's bringing out the lovers, and the wheel is your destiny. It's interesting because their second line was also difficult. And this does feel like somewhat of difficult energy. Again, she looks a little sad. Her head is down. I feel like with my head down like that, you know, it's almost like, will she see this cup? But yet, yeah, I go back to trust where God is answering your prayers right now. And this four 
of Pentacles may say, let go of exactly how that prayer is going to be answered. And instead, just trust that it's going to be answered in the most high, the most high, highest of ways. All right. We have the Two of Swords. Two of Swords is where you're really wearing a blindfold. To me, you know, it's not it's not the Eight of Swords. It's not the Nine of Swords. And maybe this is saying like, you know, like you've gotten rid of that Nine of Swords, but the Two of Swords still is here. You know, just like in that person getting ready to spill that, um, spin that wheel of destiny, She's blindfolded, a blind faith. This person's also blindfolded. Just means there's something that maybe I'm afraid to face. You know, and I do feel like if this is talking about love, um, I feel like the Nine of Swords would talk about love that potentially did not work out. And, you know, maybe you did have to overcome that. Maybe you did have to be, you know, really truthful with yourself. But I feel like if it didn't work out, maybe it wasn't meant to. Maybe that's as far as it was meant to go. Yet the wheel is spinning. And it is producing the lovers. And, you know, the meaning of the card ahead of a hard decision. It's hard to make a decision. In this type of energy. So it wants you just to face your fear. And I have to say also. I feel like in the two of swords. Like what I'm fearing. Once I take that blindfold off. You know. It's, it, the longer I leave that blindfold on. The bigger my fear becomes. And that that may be what created that nine of swords. But when I do remo remove that blindfold. It's like. Oh. Wow. It's not as bad as I thought. It can potentially block opportunities. Though, listen, I feel like if it's something it was meant to be, it comes back around. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it'll come back around. It's almost like divine will wait for you to take off that blindfold. And then we have the seven of wands. So... Synchronicities are pretty good as it relates to your opposite sign. Um, Son of Wands is talking about standing your ground. But this is also like the energy of putting out a lot of fires. You know, am I waiting for someone to maybe reach out? Maybe someone that I was in love with, but yet... To me, this is a lot of, like, you know, like one fire after I put one fire out, another one, another one starts. It can be somewhat defensive energy, but it's you defending yourself. Seven plus two, there's that nine, that nine of swords. All right, let's keep going. I feel like some of you just might be in this difficult, let's just say, energy at this moment. But I feel like, again, that will, it's, it's ready to move. I feel like the strength card is the ability to look at all of the difficult energy here, that nine of swords, the seven of wands, the two of swords, and to really be able to overcome it. Hmm. We have the full a new beginning. Mirroring the hangman. We have the three swords. Cheese Taurus. And then we have seven of swords. Wow. You know, I'm just going to be honest because. What's the sense of me doing these readings if I'm not honest? 
I feel like um, for some of you, you could have certainly been tied to someone who just keeps disappointing you. You know, Seven of Swords is like the thief in the night. This is someone that takes more than their fair share. It's definitely untrustworthy energy. It's coming under that Two of Swords. Some of you just need to take that blind foot off. You know, you may have given someone a lot of your time and they just keep producing the same thing. What are they producing? The Three of Swords. This could signify that you gave someone three chances. Well, I feel like three times and you're out. Especially with the full. A new beginning. And it is mirroring that hangman. You know, it's like your guy just saying what was in the past shouldn't have any effect in your present nor your future. You know, definitely feel like some of you have been dealing with some some difficult people. And they're putting you in this state of, well, where you can't enjoy your life. I feel like if I'm waiting for someone to be who I want them to be, I don't feel like it's going to happen. But as I say that, I want you to think about the foal's energy. The foal is, you know, and we're all the foal in the tarot. And this is about a new beginning. And again, the wheel is signifying that there is about to be, you know, something new coming into your life. The foal is about taking a leap of faith, even if I don't know. Again, blind faith. I don't even know where it's going to lead me. But I know that I'm done with the past. And it may be hard, right? Sometimes it's hard to put the past behind us. But listen, everything that's surrounding this energy, man, I feel like it needs to be in the past. Why? Well, because it just keeps producing the three swords, heartache. That's why the person in the Four of Cups is, feels like they're in this sad sta uh, status. But the Fool is free and clear. The Fool says, I'm ready to take a leap of faith. Definitely telling me what I'm afraid to face here. And that is probably someone else's energy. You know, it, to me, it just feels like, first of all, change is hard. It's hard. But how much time do I want to give someone who just keeps producing the same type of energy? You know, it almost feels like a repeat pattern. And I feel like who's ever in the Seven of Swords... I don't feel like these type of people, I don't feel like they look at themselves like, oh man, I got to stop being this way. No, I feel like they're more than comfortable living in their lower vibrational energy. And Taurus, there's no way you can be happy with someone who lies to you. I already know that about you. That would drive you crazy. And that's what the person in the Nine of Swords, they feel like they're going a little crazy. Almost like I'm questioning somebody. Are you being truthful with me? Sure I am, baby. But they're not. I swear that I am. But you're lying. Why would you say that? Because you just keep breaking my heart. And I don't want it anymore. I just have to keep defending myself. For some of you, it's like you questioning them, looking for the truth. Well, Seven of Swords says you're not going to find it. This person's just going to lie. 
They take more than they need. They think about themselves first. Very often I feel it's like narcissistic type energy. And I just have to face that. Even though I know it's hard. And listen, how do you know that this is for you? This is not the first time they've broken your heart. It's pretty clear. I feel like this Nine of Swords is a little bit of maybe trying to control this person where I can't. So what can I do? I can leave. I can end it. I can put the energy back on me. A leap of faith within myself. Again, that hangman is receiving wisdom. Looking for wisdom. And it feels like the fool is the answer for that hangman. A new beginning. Blind faith. A leap of faith. Like, like I want to say, like, you're my dear old friend. Like, you know, just know the truth. And if I can't get the truth out of someone, well, I am getting the truth. I just have to face it. You know, and I know that's difficult. And, you know, these are not the type of readings I love doing. But in the same breath with the fool here, the hangman, everything that came in the top line tells me that there is much better. There is um, loyalty, honesty that lies ahead. It's not back there. Starting at the present moment, you know, you're discontent anyway. You're in a state of worry anyway. They keep breaking my heart anyway. Lies. Maybe it's them who keeps defending themselves. And again, it's like, I don't even know if you're telling me the truth anymore. All right. Well, let's keep going. You know, I have to say that I do love that the fool was here. Even though I am recognizing the difficult energy around it, the fool is about leaving the past in the past. Listen, I extract the wisdom, but I don't allow that energy to affect how my life is going to look any longer. It's like I want to give you a big spiritual hug. But I also want to tell you in the same breath, like, I know things can get better. But sometimes it's us. You know, the, the, the unwillingness to face the truth. And, you know, ask ourselves, are we in a repeat pattern with someone? How long do we want to put up with that? That's your free will. But again, this hangman seeking wisdom, and I feel like the fool is the answer. All right, we have the page of wands. We have the six of pentacles. That makes sense. And then look at this. We have the lovers. So, you know... I don't want to make this Scorpio's reading because it's not. It's your reading. But I am noticing that you have a lot of similar cards. So already we have the lovers twice. To me, that probably signifies two different people. Six of Pentacles. You know, the person in the Six of Pentacles, which is you, um, I feel has a very empathetic heart. You know, I do care about the underdog. I do want to help where I can help. But the truth of the matter is the person in the Seven of Swords is not going to accept that help. They certainly lie to you and tell you, oh yeah, sure baby, I'll do better. 
but then they don't. And I feel like you know this. You just need to be honest with yourself. You know, to the page of wants me is my little risk taker. Um, and looking right back at that seven of swords. And I feel like what this is saying is, you know, well, let, let me put it this way. I feel like the person in the page of wands, and I do feel like this is you. Um, and I know you're not fire, but I still feel it's you. The page of wands, I feel like is someone who does take chances, right? I take chances in life and not all these chances work out. But I get back up again. I get back up again. And it's almost like this page is looking at the person in the Seven of Swords, you know, saying, I'm just not going to allow you to, at least I hope this is what's happening. Like, I feel like this is a sense of power that's coming to you. You know, I'm not going to keep fighting with you. I'm not going to keep putting out your fires. I'm not going to keep accepting your lies. I'm not going to allow you to keep breaking my heart. I'm starting to feel like there is something better out there for me. But I know it's me who has to make that change because this person's not going to. You gave. You gave. And you gave. And they took. And they took. And they took. This is really about learning that fine art of give and take. You know, definitely I feel like you're someone who who wants to help, like let's just say the underdog. Um, you know, you want to lift people up, but not everybody wants to be lifted up. So I got to know who I'm giving my energy to because you deserve to receive as much as you give, you know, equally. But you have to know that. And I love that this is coming under the full because I feel like what this is saying, very much like the Empress, right? I'm not going to stop being empathetic. I'm not going to stop caring about my fellow man. Uh, you know, I'm not going to stop being who I naturally am because of you. I feel like you're coming to some real realizations. I definitely feel like your guides are helping you here. You know, I do like that the Nine of Swords went down to the Two of Swords, but there still is a blindfold, and that Two of Swords is mirroring the Three of Swords. So I kind of feel like if I expect that there's going to be any change, Yet there's never been any change. Well, am I just fooling myself? And then it's interesting because even though the lovers is mirroring the seven of swords, I really feel what this is saying is potentially for some of you who have been stuck with, you know, and I'm saying stuck, but Really, I feel like you can free yourself. Um, I know change is hard, but in the same breath, I feel like, but look what wants to enter. Look what wants to enter. Again, there's angel influence over these lovers. This is not of a lower vibrational energy. And yes, it is a head over heart decision, but I also feel like this is talking about I do feel like it's talking about love with you. Do I think that there's no one out there who can love me the way that I feel? Well, you know, part of me wonders, do you, do you recognize that you deserve the highest form of love? Especially if you are, you know, a very giving soul, which I already know you are. It is you that needs to jump in that fool's energy, right? It's you who needs to take a chance on yourself. It's you who needs to allow this new beginning. It's you who needs to cut these ties. And I know I'm putting a lot on you, but I feel like, can you do that? 
Absolutely, you can do that, especially with the strength card also mirroring the seven of swords. I can overcome this energy because I feel like you have to recognize, like I feel like I'm in a state of sadness, of anxiety, um, you know, being lied to. My heart keeps getting broken. And, and if that's the case, I have to look at my own energy, my own vibration. You know, some people keep bringing these type of people back to themselves. And why would that be? Because my maybe I feel like I'm not worthy. You know, divine would argue with you on that one. But it's the human mind, right? And sometimes it's because of what other people have told us. I feel like this is someone completely different. By the way, it is mirroring the Empress. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you have um, a mother figure who is helping to guide you through, you know, what feels like a difficult period. And again, you know, here you are praying, right? But then what's, what does it say? Trust. I know that God in his infinite wisdom and love is answering my prayers right now. That's the full. You know, our prayers get answered, but then we have to be willing to step into it. And that's what the fool's doing, taking a leap of faith, first and foremost, on myself. All right. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Look at this. Five of cups. Five of cups. Change with the five. This person is focusing on the cups that have been knocked over. And it's interesting. There's three cups being that have been knocked over with the three of swords here. I do feel like, you know, you may have given someone, you know, multiple times to, like, I don't know, to raise their own vibration. But I also want to say, in the Five of Cups, when I stop focusing on the past and what's gone wrong, and this person makes the change that the Five is asking, there's two cups that are behind them. Well, we have two lovers here right now. You know, to me, it represents soulmates does the represent love first the change but that the magician underneath that that's your power you know this is the fool who's out the fool's mentor and the magician teaches the fool that you possess everything that you need to truly be successful on this new path manifest hand in hand with divine you know it's like a reclaiming of your power and it feels like it's always been there it's just that someone kind of got their hooks in you but you can remove those hooks some of you you may be living with that person and that may be what home is about with mother mary excuse me i'm just readjusting my chair let me grab a drink real quick. Let's not forget the Empress is also, she's in a bountiful state. But it's after this wheel turns. You know, it's like we have to understand that it's the seeds that we're planting right now that really are going to determine our harvest in the fall, so to speak, even though we're we're entering into the fall. Well, depending where you're at, but you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, what type of seeds do I want to plant? And if I plant no seeds... And I probably will have no harvest. To me, that means things will stay the same. 
I don't feel like you want this to stay the same. You know, I do feel like, I do feel like I feel you're sad. For some of you, I feel your sadness. Like I really thought and hoped that this would be my person. But they're, but they're just not. They're just not. There's no way that I feel like this person in the Seven of Swords has any interest in evolving their energy. I feel like they're just so comfortable in that energy. You know what I mean? Like, it, in a way, it reminds me of my ex-husband, right? Who was such a cheater. You know, and I did give him chance after chance after chance. And it was me who had, came to, had to come to that realization. I can't change him. But what I can do is change myself. I can change my situation, my circumstances. Okay, it's a little difficult right now. Um, but yet in the same breath, you know, I feel like in the same breath, it's about trusting that, you know, I feel like most of us at some time in our life have in some way been involved with people in the Seven of Swords energy. And... You know, sometimes it's free will. You're right. It's like a free will love. Sometimes it's a karmic love. And if it's a karmic love, then there's a lesson there. And that lesson may simply be to like know your value, know your worth. Even if someone else is telling you the opposite, know yourself. Especially if you've been working on yourself. It's almost like in the eight of uh or in the strength card, you are working on yourself. But at the same time, it's like your vibrations lifting, theirs isn't. Well, listen, I feel like the way the universe works is it's like it's trying to get this energy to fade away, but sometimes we keep pulling it back. Why? I don't know what I don't know what lies out there. I don't know what my future is going to look like. You know, in a way, I want to say I don't know how it could look any worse. And I feel like there's someone who's like even affected like your money, your creative house, um, your abilities and really what you can do in the world doesn't mean that you haven't done anything, you know, um, but I feel like there's so much more that just feels like it's waiting for you. All right, let's go ahead and um, did I cut these? I can't remember. So we're going to cut them again. I just want to make sure I introduce them into the reading. We're going to start at the beginning, but we are going to read it as a whole. We have the Queen of Cups. Interesting, because that could be Scorpio. Um, but Queen of Cups, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. But many of you know how I read. This is probably you. This is someone who, first of all, she's mirroring the Empress. So this is someone who loves love. You know, who wants love in their life. Doesn't mean I have to have love in my life. She is holding her cup out. Oh, there's two cards. I felt like there was two cards. Look at that. The four cups. Interesting. I felt like there was two cards. I don't know why I didn't look. So there's that discontentment and boredom. But look at the difference here. This person's looking right at that cup now. Use your spiritual discernment. I feel like you have nothing to fear here. I mean, I get it. Like, I don't want to, I don't want the same type of energy to come back to me. 
That's why you got to think about your own vibration. You know, as you evolve, so will the energies around you evolve. And those that don't evolve naturally will want to fade away. We just have to let them. So here comes this cup. And that's probably why I said, look at this, this queen. She's holding her cup out. It's almost like she's asking divine, please fill up my cup. You know, I know I, I already know not everyone's going to agree with me, especially those who are here who are checking up on a Taurus. Um, but I feel like Taurus is one of those, one of the signs that are really loyal, you know, in their heart. They're very loyal, um, very steady. Um, but yet at the same time, you can certainly give and give and give and, you know, give chances after chances. Why? Because I feel like in your heart, you want to see people do better, but not all people want to do better. So be it. So the queen is holding out her cup. Four of Pentacles over the lovers. And over the Nine of Swords. Interesting how you have the Four of Cups and the Four of Pentacles here. And now we have the Four of Cups and the Four of Pentacles here with this Queen of Cups in between. I'm also noticing the difference in their energy where this person is looking down, right? Looking at the cups that were, right? Three cups, three times my heart was broken. This four of pentacles where I may be resistant to change. This four of pentacles, she's not resistant. She's open. This four of cups, I'm not even recognizing that there's this cup coming towards me. This one, I'm looking right at it. Use your spiritual discernment. But listen, it's on the wheel. Nine of swords over the hangman. And the four of cups. It's almost like divine is you know wants you to recognize that energy first and foremost because the full is underneath that and it does kind of feel like a change of energy already you know here she looks like oh my god i'm in a state of anxiety like i don't know what to trust or believe anymore here it's like the swords aren't even touching her Some of you may have like literally asked or prayed about like this person changing and divine or God may say this person's not going to change. But that doesn't mean that you should stay in it. Because let's remember the nine of swords really speaks about unnecessary worry. But I feel the anxiety in this one where here I feel like you're kind of letting it go. You know, it feels like the truth is coming. I just have to accept it. Nine is about reflection. But it really is about final reflection. It can talk about a chapter. But this chapter feels like it wants to come to an end. Or I feel like it needs to come to an end. Look at that. Eight of Cups. 
So now you have the Eight of Cups mirroring another Eight of the Strength card. Courage. This person is someone who has looking with has taken that time to look within their emotional house. The things that didn't go right. You know, and taking the judgment off themselves. This person's literally leaving that energy. Where are they heading to? The Nine of Cups. Inner harmony. That's what feels like was taken away from you. It's a completely different way of living. And it's also coming over the Empress. So some of you are learning like, or maybe you're saying to yourself, I hope that I'm not going to allow this past energy to play any part of what my future is going to look like. Eight, a new beginning, the full, a new beginning. Look at that. There's two cards here too. Interesting how I didn't even notice that. Wow. The nine of pentacles. Well, hello. Um, abundance. You know, this is an energy of independence. And that's where you feel comfortable. This is the energy of knowing that you can take care of you. And I love that it's also connected to the Empress. And the bounty that she has. Nine of Pentacles talks about independent success. Yes, you do have to put the work in. But if you're questioning, you know, can I take all these ideas I have, even my past experiences, and use them in a different way. You know, I often feel like part of what our purpose is, is to really help others who um, are kind of stuck. Who maybe have gone through the same things that you've gone through. You know, this definitely means that abundance is on its way. But I also feel it's really talking about an independent nature. Standing on my own two feet. Two nines back to back. Can be two chapters coming to a close. And then the Eight of Cups. I do feel like someone has limited you, not just in love, but also in your ability to create to have success. And it makes sense, right? Because if I'm in this constant state of worry, and I feel like if this person just keeps lying to me, chances are they're going to put it on me. They're going to say, well, you just don't know how to trust, or you, you know, it's your fault when it's not your fault. So, you know, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Goodbye, blindfold. Goodbye, emotional distress. Goodbye, old love. Hello to a brighter future. I love this energy also if you're working from home. You know, let's not forget that the Empress, I mean, we're all receiving epiphanies. But when we're in like this, this type of energy, it's really hard to trust the signs. But I feel like once, once we start to clear that energy, then we start to notice those signs. And they, came, they come fast and furious. It's like Divine is saying, once you jump into that foal's energy, you're just going to be surprised at how good your life can look, how good your life can be. But yes, I feel like first I had to find the courage. And I feel like there's a reward in just that alone.
Some of you may have wanted to do something, you know, of a creative nature. And again, I do feel like it's tied back to money. Um, but you may have questioned yourself. And I feel like this is saying, you're right. You do have these abilities. You really can create success for yourself. You know, if you're in the nine of pentacles where let's say abundance starts flowing and this seven of swords person is still around, their hands are going to be out. Gimme, gimme, gimme. In the nine of pentacles, you're like, no, no. I created this. This is my abundance, not yours. Doesn't mean that, you know, I don't want to help people. But now I know what type of person to help, you know, who just takes. You know, I give to this person, let's say I give them money. Well, they're just going to use it to stay in their lower vibrational energy. It's almost like, you know, the more money I give them, the more I help them live in that type of energy. This definitely feels like you're clearing it now. You're allowing yourself to have a new beginning. You're on your way to inner harmony. These epiphanies, ideas are now reaching you. You know, prayers are being answered. And again, they may look very differently than the prayer that you prayed. Maybe I prayed that this, this would work out. But I feel like divine's like, it's not going to work out. And let us deal with that. You get moving towards your, your truth, your abundance to what within the wheel you were destined to do, who you were destined to be. And if it is a karmic, like you were in a karmic relationship and you break free from that. Boy, do I feel like there are karmic rewards. Look at this. The two of wands over that two of swords. Goodbye, seven of swords. Goodbye, narcissist. Goodbye, taker. I am stepping on a new path. You know, the two of wands, I'm not even projecting myself too far out in the future. I just know that I want something different. It's like you're following the energy of the Empress. I don't know where it's going to take me. But I know it's going to be better than where I've been. To me, that means the blindfolds come off. You know, and where I thought there was going to be this big bad monster. There's none of that. Two of Wands to me speaks about like what path you're about to walk down. This is a very passionate type energy. Passion, yes, probably love, but also passion for, you know, what you do in the world. That blindfold has come off. And I feel proud of you. Look at that, the four of wands, not the lovers. Almost like they're connected, but let's see what's before it. I'm really happy to see the four of wands right now. That is the marriage card or a real commitment. You know, interesting, the three of wands. I just, I was thinking to myself, the perfect card to follow this two of wands would be the three of wands. And here it is. Here it is. Oh, there's a card before that. Interesting how I keep missing that. Look at that. The devil. 
over that seven of wands. Almost like I'm defending myself against the devil. You know, it's so interesting. I had a dream. I've been having the strangest dreams. And I feel like my dreams are relating to the readings that I'm doing. I had a dream that the devil was trying to get me to do certain things like harmful things to people. You know, people I cared about. And in my dream, I said to the devil, let's talk about this. Let's think of a different way. You know, like I was negotiating with the devil. But I was trying to get the devil to understand that it didn't have to be in the way that the devil saw it. Right? I could do it in a different way. So I was negotiating with the devil. Interesting. It is the card of Capricorn, by the way. Coming over that seven of wands. So interesting. It's almost like negotiating with the devil. Then we have the three of wands. Oh, I'm sorry. Then we have the three of wands right over the full. Three, three of wands. Excuse me one second. Okay, sorry about that. I got a knock at the door. Anyways, um, literally, I was just thinking like the three of wands was the perfect energy to come out now. Now I understand why it's over the full. So three of wands, it really does talk about not projecting ourselves into the future. It's trusting in divine, right? It's saying, I know my ships will come in, in their divine timing. But in the meantime, I'm going to live in the present moment. I'm going to find ways to, you know, find joy, even if I, you know, anything, anything. Definitely, you are stepping upon the path of the wands. Two of wands. Just about to step onto it. The three of wands. Now I'm on it. Coming over the full. You know, it's like you have cleared that energy. And now you're trusting in divine. And then look what follows that. So we have the two of wands. The three of wands. And now the four of wands. This is about a commitment. A true commitment. You know, they call it the marriage card. Can be blended families. It's someone who is making a real and true commitment to you. You know, they don't just talk the talk. They walk their talk. Is that right? They walk their talk. That doesn't sound right. Do I think it has anything to do with the Seven of Swords? I don't because I feel like this is you up here in the Eight of Cups saying enough is enough. In the Two of Wands, this is you taking off that blindfold. And again, it's interesting how, like in my dream, I was negotiating with the devil. But I was winning. I was winning. Like I wasn't buying what the devil was trying to feed me. You know? It, it, interesting. Wow. Two of wands is mirroring that four of wands. We have the lovers here twice. Maybe I really had hoped that this person could live up to that energy. But they can't and they won't. And I just have to face that. And once I do, I feel like everything changes. Everything changes. I feel like the hangman, see that wisdom he's seeking, he finds it. And I feel like the wisdom is to be the fool, right? Put the past in the past. Allow yourself to experience some new adventures. That's what the wand speaks about. Very adventurous and passionate time in your life. You know, it's almost like you're taking... Um, your hardships and you're putting them, you know, maybe you're writing a book about it. Maybe you're starting a blog. 
where you now, because I feel like the one thing that hasn't changed is your soul, your compassion, and your empathy. Three Wands is just saying, I'm just going to put my wishes out there, but I'm going to let go of control. And I'm going to trust in divine that when it's time for my ships to come in, that they will. This is a very optimistic view after what feels like a very difficult time. And you have to give yourself the credit because it's you who's cutting those ties. All right. Wow. It's like everything's starting to change now. I love the four of wands right above the lovers. Hello, nine of cups. I told you you were going to reach it. Here you are doing the work, looking with that emotional house, finding the courage to make the changes, to take off those blindfolds, to face the truth. Put yourself back in the present moment. Allow blind faith to take place. That wisdom that you're seeking, you are now finding. And now this speaks of inner harmony. You know, there is no power left to that seven of swords. No power. This is also about a fulfillment of a wish. But again, it's like for some, especially if you've been through this very difficult energy, it's just about learning to and just, well, I shouldn't say learning. I feel like it gives you an opportunity to like start to love your life again. And that's what that inner harmony is, is about. You know, the nine of swords is a terrible way of living. The seven of swords, it's a terrible person to live with. This can certainly talk about being single for a little while. You know, the nine of pentacles, learning to stand on my own two feet. You know, trusting in like, you know, the the things that I've wanted to do in the world that maybe I haven't. Because I put, I've been putting my focus back. But now that I'm starting to put my focus in the present moment, I'm becoming more optimistic. I'm about to take a leap of faith on myself. It feels like it's telling you what starts to open up. Inner harmony and then a, fulfill, a fulfillment of a wish. You know, it does feel like, like bad karma. But now here comes the good karma. Whoa. All right. We have the Page of Swords coming over the Page of Wands. Interesting. We have the Page of Cups, three pages in a row. Hello, Ten of Cups over the Lovers. I love this. You have the Nine of Cups first. Inner harmony. Starting to love your life again. Why? Because this extreme worry is being put behind you. The Ten of Cups. You're not alone in this energy. Right over the lovers. With the marriage card right above it. Three pages. First of all, the Page of Cups, I feel like it talks about, like, where did I take a lot of this pain at in your inner child energy? So to me, the Page of Cups is really just learning how to love myself again after the fact. 
after everything I've dealt with. I feel the Page of Swords is you like reclaiming your voice, reclaiming your truth. Page of Wands feels like taking a chance on yourself. And I feel like literally it's like you're looking at that person in Seven of Swords saying that. And sometimes I feel like don't even fight in that. Like if you're ready to leave that energy, don't even allow yourself to get in a fight with, with that person. Just leave. Just end it. Of course, that is your free will. But boy, is everything. I mean, just look at how this is all falling. Look at that. Seven of Swords again. Right over the Seven of Swords. Hello, Ten of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles. And then the Hermit. And look what the Hermit's doing. The Hermit is, is shining his beacon of light outwardly. And to me, that means that you've learned through these experiences. You know, you have a lot of nines. So it can talk about a period of time of heavy reflection. But this reflection was really about you finding your own spirituality, trusting within it, your wisdom, reclaiming that. Understand that sometimes these difficult situations teach us more than anything else could. I feel like the hermit is the wise one, the teacher. You know, like, I want to help others. And this beacon of light is illuminating the snake. To me, it's a sense of clarity. No, that's not the word I meant to say. Like, comfort. Knowing that, you know, any snakes in the grass, they can't bite you. You can see them. It is like a spiritual evolution. And let me just say, the Three of Pentacles being here, Three of Pentacles to me is about your creative house. It is about what you do in the world. But it's about your individuality, who you are, and how special you are to the world. You know, sometimes this is, you know, sometimes people say, well, how can I, how can I move on? Sometimes getting lost in your creative house is the answer because I feel like when our creative house really starts to open up, everything else just flows. But it's a reminder that, you know, you are exactly who you're meant to be. It's a celebration of your individuality. But this is other people also noticing that and appreciating that. And I kind of love that. And I feel like for some of you, you know, like I want to put the title healer. I want to add that to the end of your name. The healer. The messenger. How can I help heal others? Through my own experiences. You know, this also ties me back to the Empress. Where she is bountiful. She is like holding her harvest. Maybe I'm just beginning. It's kind of getting lost in your craft. But look what's right next to it. The Ten of Pentacles. First of all, that's a house of loyalty. And it's interesting that the Seven of Swords is next to it. Almost like, again, if it doesn't mean that I can't be successful, even if this energy still exists. But what it does to me feel like is someone will constantly have their hand out. Gimme, gimme, gimme. But it's not meant for them. It's meant for these lovers. These lovers have the Ten of Cups. Love. It is the house of love, harmony, laughter. You know, and I love the Page of Cups right before that because the Page of Cups is your inner child and it's the ability to learn to laugh again, to enjoy again, to love yourself again. And then it moves into the Ten of Cups. So not only do we have the House of Harmony, we have this true commitment.
sometimes I feel like these readings talk about our past experiences and how, I mean, it's what I do, right? It, it, like what brought me to, to reading Tarot? My past experiences. And now it's what I do for a living. You know, and it was something that was completely unexpected. And it was after a very difficult time in my life. Two of wands, just step upon that path. Three of wands, try to be optimistic about the potential of your future. The fool taking a leap of faith on yourself, first and foremost. And then I feel like as it relates to love, listen, the wheel is spinning. And it's producing the lovers. But maybe the hangman can also be like, how can this love be when this person is still around? Maybe it was about me finding that courage to break those ties, to believe in myself again, to start planting those seeds so that I can have a harvest. This is you enjoying that harvest. You know what I love is you have the nine of cups that goes into the ten of cups. You have the nine of pentacles that goes into the ten of pentacles. So, you know, if you are alone for a little while, don't disregard that. Maybe there's something you're meant to do. Some of you, you're already doing it. I, I feel it. Like some of you already have evolved from this energy. And, you know, it's going to be your comments in the comment sections that's going to help other people see that what I'm saying can really, can really manifest. The person in the Five of Cups, focusing on what I have lost, focusing on that Three Swords. But when I make that change, and this person doesn't even know that these two cups exist, right? Because their focus, is, their focus is on the past, what I have lost, who I have lost. Well, what if there is someone who, let's just say, is of your vibration? You know, it makes sense to me that the hangman be part of this reading because it does feel like, again, that blindfold really did need to come out come off. Um, maybe I really did need to just look at the fact that, you know, I've given someone multiple chances and they keep just disappointing me. Don't give them any more chances. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like if someone's been telling you that, you know, that you can't have success in your life where well, they are just wrong, especially for you, Taurus, especially for you. Inner harmony, the house of love, independent success, the house of abundance. What's connecting them all? The four of wands. Four of wands, true commitment. Everyone in that energy wants to be there. Matter of fact, I feel like in the four of wands, it's like once we find each other, we couldn't imagine our lives without each other. This is not someone who's going to treat you like this. But listen, one of the lessons you have learned is now what you do not want in love. But I also think there's an importance to like, like getting balance within myself first. And I feel like, you know, then think about the law of attraction. You know, if I'm in that three of wands energy where... I'm just going to start, you know, believing that these ships will come in in their due time. I'm telling you, they will. It's showing it. What a reading. What a reading. Don't negotiate with the devil. Don't do it. Take that blindfold off, free yourself, and just watch what follows. You know, it brings me right back to that opening song. I think I love you. Well, I feel like that's the lovers. 
And again, in the lovers, it's the angel. It's an angel who's influenced the lovers. You know what else, before I end, I want to say, you can't see it in this energy, but a lot of times you'll see in um, the devil's card, you'll also see the lovers, but you'll see Satan's influence over the lovers. Well, not here. And I feel like that is why I had that dream last night. All right. I think what I'm going to do, look at that, the emperor on the bottom of the deck. The emperor. We have the emperor and the empress. That makes sense. I often call them my power couple. I always call them my power couple. You know, these are about two people who really do care about their fellow man. These are about two people who really can be very successful in life. The emperor is someone that we look up to. If he was in reverse, I would say no, but he's not. This is someone that we can look up to. I don't feel like this person you could look up to. But I do want to take Mother Mary one more time over this reading now. Grace. I am filled with the same beauty, poise, and divine perfection as all of God's other creatures. Maybe you just had to learn that. You know, it's almost like someone has like taken that from you. And maybe this is just what you had to understand and learn again. And then open your heart. That's what the Empress represents. You know, don't let the people of the Seven of Swords energy don't let them close down your heart. Yes, close your heart down to them. But don't allow them to have any say-so of what your future can look like. Because look at the beauty that shows up as soon as we take that blindfold off. Open your heart. I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. Look at this. Not only is, is great love showing up, you know, it's talking, to me, this is real life. Like, you know, the difficult energies that we have to go through. You know, our heart's getting broken over and over, but why do we keep accepting it? Um, and, and does it not lower our own vibration? And then the realization of that, and then the saying no more, no more, and then what opens up for you? You know, just how I opened the, re the reading with blind faith. That's what I feel like you need to have. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Wow, what a reading. Um, you know, my prayer for you is definitely that, you know, if you've been dealing with this difficult energy, you can see for exactly what it is and then, and then make your decisions. But understand that, boy, do I feel divine in your reading and really trying to help you, to help guide you to help you to be able to trust within yourself, trust that not all love, I don't know that I would even call this love, but that that it has any so say, so, so say, so say. I feel like now I can't talk. You know, it's interesting. It's almost like don't negotiate with the devil. Just live your life, live your light. And that's what the hermit is doing. The wisdom that you have gained is tremendous. And I feel like the rewards that follow, also tremendous. 
there will be a day that you will look back and you're going to be thanking God that you ripped that blindfold off. I just know it. All right, guys. I love you. Thank you. And I will see you next time at our table. Please leave your comments, especially if if you've overcome this energy. I feel like that's what we're here for, to help those who may still be stuck in it. You know, who may who still may think there will be change. In this reading, it's very clear that there will not be change. So what do I have to change? Me. My situation. And the trust within myself. I love you guys. I thank you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.